talk to the chair, but uh, what I'm hearing is that there was a, a one shooter that came in and started shooting inside that little church. And so far, numbers are changing at this time, maybe uh, close to 24 deceased and over 24 to 20 injured. And that's all the information I have right now. Hi, this is Erica Hernandez reporting outside in Sutherland Springs. We are about 10 miles east of Floresville. I'm going to turn the camera around briefly here. There is a um, mass casualty, possible mass casualty scene here in Sutherland Springs at the First Baptist Church. There is, uh, neighbors are reporting that a gunman went into the church and opened fire. Neighbors are saying that they never saw anybody come out. Uh, multiple units are on scene. Um, they've also called out an ambu bus, which is for multiple uh, casualties here. in uh, let me again tell you this, we're outside of Floresville. This is about 10 miles east in Sutherland Springs at the First Baptist Church. You can see personnel out here. Uh, working families are starting to arrive. Two Air Life uh, helicopters have just landed. Um, this is an ongoing investigation that just happened about an hour ago here in Sutherland Springs. People have been killed with children among the victims. At least 15 others were injured. A shooter was killed after a chase by police. Carrie Matula works near the church and spoke to us a short time ago. We heard semi-automatic gunfire about right in the vicinity of the store. We're only about 50 yards away from this church. Um, this is a very small community, so everybody was very curious as to what was going on. Uh, first responders came very quickly, it's like within minutes there was, there was fire trucks and ambulances. Uh, Jim, I'm going to ask you the same question I was asking Malcolm Nance a short time ago about when you take a look at the, the aerial footage there, you get a sense of the, the space that we're talking about, the size of the church. Uh, are you surprised at all that uh, after being able to wreak the kind of carnage he, this shooter did, that he was able to get away and, and ultimately leave the scene of the shooting? No, not surprised. I mean, a quiet Sunday morning, uh, you know, Sunday afternoon, any church. Uh, it's quiet. The streets are quiet. If you come in there with any kind of firepower, gun, long gun, maybe a couple of handguns, and you start shooting people inside. Uh, they're trapped inside, and uh, if they, they hadn't planned for security, then, uh, you know, they're just mowed down. And then the, the, the shooter can just get out and get in his car or truck and just speed away. And, you know, within a couple of minutes uh, on the roads in southern Texas like that, you're, you're away from it. And uh, when the reports come in to 911, patrol cars are responding, but there may be no description. You know, as a, a uniformed officer, I've passed sh uh, shooters on the way to scenes because you don't have a description of the car. But you don't know who it is. You're passing many cars and you're going to the scene of the crime. And uh, he, he could very well be passing uh, deputies and city police and state troopers responding as he's driving away. But someone likely gave a description. That got out on the air and they got him located. Or he could have been traveling and still shooting people. Mm. And reports coming mm. in to 911 and they located his car. Uh, you know, whether he was shot uh, by officers or shot himself or crashed and got killed, uh, you know, was yet to be seen. And uh, the motives are many, uh, but the tragedy is, is the same regardless of the motive. Um.